Welcome to the General's Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. It's been a while since I've casted this game, and I feel guilty. I, I feel like I have dishonored myself, dishonored my viewers. Indeed, it's been too long. I love this game so much. And, uh, here I am casting a free-for-all on Pyro Pyroclasm, I think it's called. We're gonna have three pretty top-tier players. Vindy's as our allied... Allies? Allied? Dulon as the Empire, and Demon as the Soviets. I think this was a tournament. There was a, uh, it was like a replay highlight. Had a bunch of wubs on gamereplays.org. So this is a pretty interesting map because you have, like, really only one land path into your base, but it is actually pretty wide. Uh, so you can definitely harass through that. But then you also have a lot of, of naval attack paths as well. You've got one across there, around here, including uh, one actually in the water, and another one basically on, on the water. So we could see a lot of naval play, and I think that's really cool. I love seeing naval play. That's really one of the strengths of Red Alert 3 is, is how well they've managed to intertwine a naval and aircraft into the land, the land uh, units. This is a pretty aggressive strat from our man Vindy's. He's gone for a seaport to get the Riptide ACV and actually full it up, chock a block full of the, the Javelin Troopers. I had to try very hard not to say Missile Defenders. In, in Zero Hour, the, uh, the Javelin Troopers. Uh, he's actually wasted about 10 seconds of time, though, because he went to try and kill that bear. So that may give time for the uh, Empire play here, Mr. Dulon, to get some defenses up. If he scouted it, it may, it may have done. The bear has pretty good attack range, but... Man, there's Riptide. Is, is, he, is he going for north, for Demon? Demon, yeah. I should have, like, written down the names of these players. But it's actually kind of annoying that uh, this interface doesn't show the player's name. Like in Zero Hour, it shows you, you know, who's who. Coming to Heroes, it shows who's who. Really, every game uh, shows you the name of the players without having to navigate into the menu. We do have three Mecha Tengus for the Empire here for Demon. Dulon, damn it. <laughs> Dulon. Uh, and actually, this is pretty vulnerable. There is a Vindicator, but. There are Tengus nearby, which can shoot him down. Is he actually going to... Oh, there's actually a Apollo in the air. Uh, can he get into the repair radius in time? Probably not. He did kill one of the, the Tengus, though. No, it does go down. So nice harassment thus far from Dulon. He may lose his Tengus here, but it should be okay. Actually, there's a three of them, so maybe not. Hey, even Javelin Troopers are firing at the other Tengus, so they have, they have to disengage from this one. Meanwhile, Demon's had free reign here, so he's already teched up to his super reactor. He's already got the triple refinery. So this extended skirmish is definitely playing into his hands. And that's a uh, triple refinery coming shortly. Oh, not, not yet, mind you. He doesn't actually have that one completely, but he has the MCV moved up. And this, this construction yard is actually within range of the naval expansion. He, he actually uh, sold off his, his seaport, though, so he won't be able to produce any more naval units to defend. But that's not really the concern anyway, is it's, it's a lot of Tengus here. Okay, he pops out his Javelin Troopers. Not very good focus fire here from Duelong, because he keeps focusing the Riptide. He really should be focusing the Javelins. But that being said, that was a really sick play there, because he actually had the uh, Dishonorable Discharge, where the, 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 the whatever vehicle it blows up and does damage. So he sent that into kind of suicide against the Javelin Troopers, like the... The nuke battle master from Zero Hour. So all in all, uh, really no units left for for Vindy's. He has an airfield, but it looks empty. He has three refineries, but they're so vulnerable. There is a multi gun turret on that refinery at least, but he could get vulnerable. He could, he could get taken out here, I guess, by some Tropper VXs, given that he has a pretty sizable army of Tengus. But <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Need to leave a little bit more distance. Okay, going for some harassment here, but uh, for, but uh, Demon had a lot of defenses there. He had multiple bullfrogs. He had a couple of hammer tanks, and this is a four refinery opener for him. He's got a Tesla coil and a flat cannon, so he's looking incredibly strong. This is pretty crazy, though. He's actually going for an MCV push, 
Uh, does he have a crusher crane? Maybe he has like a, a Tesla coil prepared. He's a multi-gun a turret. He has a laser lock here as well from the javelin. Uh, what is he doing? Did he? Did he? But oh man, a little bit late there. He's actually going for the crush now. I don't know if he has the um. What's that thing called where you get health back when you crush? Yeah, the grinder treads. He has that, but he's wasted a little bit too much time here. Okay, there should be something being thrown down now. Barracks and the. Oh, never. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of of allied. You, you can't have things built up as Soviets. Nice work with the barracks to try and prevent the javelin troopers, but the mortar gun turret is going to be firing, and there goes the MCV. Wow, what a throwaway! I mean, the MCV push would have been okay if he if he didn't mess it up. He, he left it there taking damage for at least ten seconds, and this Tesla coil is going to get taken out as well here. Oh man, that was a really bad play. I don't think he realized that it was it was stuck there. Like, he must have been back at his base microing somewhere else. Because I think there was actually some harassment. But, he, yeah, he just stuck there. I think what happened is he, he deployed his MCV. And then, like, dur during that process, or before the process, the Mortigan turret was deployed and that kind of over overrode the spot. But either way, uh, Demon, now without a construction yard. I mean, that's okay, though. He has the, construct he has the, the uh, Crusher Crane. As a war factory, so it's not really a big deal, but it's uh, it is definitely an advantage that he's kind of thrown away. But he still has the four uh, the four refinery economy at the moment, uh, which currently no one else does. Both of these players only have uh, the uh, the three times refinery. We have the point defense drones, so this Tengu army is looking even more deadly. Ah, uh, Sputnik! What a mad dog! He's going for his fifth refinery. Of course, he lost his his MCV, so that's really his only option for ex excuse me for expanding. And now we have the cryocopters. Risky move, though, given just the sheer quantity of Mecha Tengus. <laughs> Double flat cannon. Wow. No way these these vindicators or or the Tengus are going to actually take this out. I guess Chopper VX is more likely than Tengus, but. Um, just, you stand in Empire Mix, Choppers, Tengus, all that good stuff, and that's the fourth refinery, which is a little bit exposed, but there's currently no naval forces for Demon. There is a couple of Twin Blades, though, they could harass the, the refinery, or rather, the Collector, Harvester, whatever it's called in this game, or Collector. Could work, though, going straight for the, well, Derek, but two Apollos there to defend. Wow, there's a lot of refineries here. <laughs> Actually, it was one here for Vindy's. But I don't see that staying there for very long with so many hammer tanks on the field. Well, that's that's two twin blades? Three twin blades going down. Watching on a turret, javelin troops. Costly throwaway here. Oh, look at this harassment. He's going, what, for the flat cannon? Okay, so I think he wants to take out the anti-air so the, the chop of the X's can go in, but there's still plenty of bullfrogs and these hammer tanks are doing pretty well they took out multiple mecha tengus nanotech mainframe and there's already a, a the imperial docks so he could go straight for a shogun battleship and given the the placement of this uh, generator that's that's quite vulnerable to the sea nice work with the yari mini subs that will take out the ore refinery I'm guessing he's actually teched up his his uh, naval thing. Oh no, he hasn't yet. The fortified fleet. About uh, what does he have? Yeah, standard stuff. Cryo shot. And in response, will be the ore refinery of Dulon going down. He's got plenty of Tengus, but. With that many bullfrogs, no way they can engage. Instead, he's going for the counter-attack. Risky move here. Actually, this battle lab is very exposed. Or maybe the airfield? What's the best choice here? I mean, the battle lab, it does have the repairs from the crusher crane. So I guess going for the, the economy is the safer option. 
And the refinery actually survives, because we see Dulon pulling back to defend. And meanwhile, then, uh, Vindy's is going to be doing some harassment of his own. So that was a good turnaround there for... for Dulon, the Empire. Killed one of the Collectors. There's so much anti-air all over the map, it's really hard to fly these Tengus around. There's Mortigna turrets. There's javelins, there's uh, bullfrogs and flat cannons here, so... Got to be careful about trying to fly around uh, the map, and... Really nice pick off there with the Apollos, because he knew how weak the, the, the Tengus were. Ah, oh, look at this, V4 rocket. He uses the shrink ray, that'll buy some time. There's actually... I mean, there's, there's five javelin troopers here, and there's, there's, there's no anti-infantry apart from the, the, using the hammer tanks to crush with those grinder treads. So maybe that should be the unit composition, is, is just a lot of javelin troops. And he actually has the assault destroyer, which can use the black hole armor very effectively. Nice attempted pick-off, but didn't quite get it. Decommissioned satellite. I guess they're the collector, not quite the refinery though. Already an aircraft carrier. Going to be using the EMP rocket. Which stunned the Tengus, so they're going to get taken out now. This is pretty scary, two aircraft carriers. This is turning into a pretty crazy late game. Do we have a naval for the Soviet? We do, we have dreadnoughts. Surely we have the Shogun battleships. Yeah, we all three of our of our players now have their high tier battleships. This is crazy. It's so rare that you see these high tier battleships, and now every player has one. These aircraft carriers are being a little bit passive, though. They really should be trying to take out these these buildings. Oh, nice work there. The, the V4 gets the refinery. Still, the old Derek stands. Ooh, Shinobi, he's gonna steal some cash. <laughs> nice. You get $2,000 cash, which is a... Uh, which is a net positive of 1000 because Shinobi costs you 1000 so This is a, a nice little way to get extra cash. I love that. Definitely swag points for the Shinobi. Okay, Cryoshock going in, and he's gonna get uh, all of his defense is frozen. Flat cannons, refinery, not quite the Tesla coil just yet. And the assault destroyer getting focused down. Gets the refinery just in time, but even then, the Vindicators have arrived, I think. Something something blew up that refinery and the flat cannon must have been the assault destroyer before it died. Oh, Eureka, nice. Eureka has to be careful though, because there's there's definitely cryocopters and they can freeze her very fast. I like how there's also the sea wings for the, the naval anti-air. Wave force artillery, man, this game is going crazy. I love how the, the late game works in, in this game. There's there's a lot of really fun units. And they're not just fun in terms of like they kill stuff, it's like they're very finesse in terms of how you actually use them. And this is not how you use them. Okay, there's this three twin blades here, but the sea wings. Are they enough here? I don't actually know if they're enough. Let's see. It's still no, no fortified fleet. That would, that certainly helps. Sturdier hulls, superior scanner. So it gives them more health. I don't know what else it does. Oh, Natasha. Did he actually? Did he snipe out? Wow, that's been decrewed. So now he, he needs to actually recrew that with with an engineer. Engineer or a shinobi, but of course the shinobi is more expensive, so the engineer is the ideal choice. Yeah, that's the EMP rocket. It's a nice shot. It doesn't get the a cooler though because it's actually submerged, but the flat cannons were were, were disrupted, so they can't shoot down the uh, aircraft carry. But now we have the terror drone and the decommissioned satellite. What a sick play! That one will go down here with the cooler. Nice. Oh, and the Terror Drone, and even the uh, Dreadnought fires through. The Cooler can't quite survive this one in time, though. 
Good pick off though of the the uh, psychic school girl, Yuriko. But he has to. Oh, another long range shot there. The Natasha snipe. He has the sea wings, which are good anti infantry, so they can use their their plane, the, the flying mode, and snipe down Natasha in a way that the chopper of the Xs can't because they're more anti tank. But with so many bullfrogs, he really can't use them in air mode. I just need to plug my headphones in. My, uh, my wireless headphones from running out of battery. Okay. Whoops. I lost sound. I think I hit something I wasn't supposed to. There we go. It's back. Will be the refinery going down again. And at this stage, I wonder if the base supplies are exhausted. The base, the base ore, rather. No, there's there's a bit left. But they will be running out shortly. And that does make the water and the forward expansions even more valuable as the late game uh, is drawn out. He may want to have... Oh, Shinobi. Okay. He may want to have some units preemptively. Wait, what? That... Okay, I don't know what that was. Maybe it's like a bug where if it's decrewed and it has an, a, a force attack command, it just keeps doing it. Okay, he's pushing through with his javelin troops, but these are very clumped up, and the, the crusher grinder treads, rather, going to sustain those hammer tanks. That was nasty. Just need to spread those troops out a little bit more. But that's kind of why I, I like the, the Tesla troopers as Soviets, because you can't just crush through them so easily when you have that, that, that stun nearby. Okay, middle supply goes down. Bit of an engagement here. The Tengus aren't quite focusing the Apollos, and as a result, Apollos are getting so much free damage. That wasn't very well played by uh, by Duelon. But the naval battle continues. It's not so stressful to play. You have to worry about multiple fronts, multiple opponents. Fantastic work with these battleships, though. That will go down. It's going to take out a fair bit of the base. I think the war factory goes down. Oh, no, never mind. But uh, it's vulnerable now. He's out of power. He actually has the Iron Curtain. What's the timer on that? It's currently powered down, though. The Iron Curtain. Uh, oh, well, he only just built it. He has the full countdown on it. But he uses. No, no. Well, that's the Iron Curtain there, rather. So he has invulnerable twin blades. It did wear off though, and only taking out one of the battleships in the in the process. Maybe it would have been better off going for this the sea wings. He snipes down that thing again. Oh what? <laughs> the Yari mini sub. He used the 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 suicide attack there to actually uh, banzai charge and take out the Natasha. That was fantastic. Never seen that before. Seaport getting focused down. The air units out of position for Vindy's on the left flank to try and take out the, the Soviet player, but now the Empire player collapsed upon him. Naganata cruisers very, very cost effective on the seas, but Javelin Troop is doing some good damage to them. It's actually a refinery core. Man, he's going to get taken out here by the uh, aircraft carrier. Should have deployed while he had the chance. It's expensive. Fully heroic cruiser and a Vet 2 one as well. Might be worth getting uh, some hydrofoils. Hydrofoils are very good versus the high tier, well, I guess the tier 2 naval units. You, you shut them down for about half or a third of the price. Wow! Rocket Angels! Man, that's different. Rare you see those. Now, I don't really understand why you would go Rocket Angels over the Chopper VXs. I guess they're just cheaper. Okay, I'm guessing they're more cost effective because they're quite cheap. They think they're 800, but Chopper VXs are like 1200. If uh, someone in the comments can tell me why you go Rocket Angels, I would love to hear. Maybe it's just the, the second ability, the Paralysis Whip. That's probably really good because it's quite cheap. It's like the Hydrofoil, I think it just disables something. Sniping out these these water 
refineries are just so important. But even the the middle as well. Currently, it's actually Vindy's who's mining in the middle. And Demon's got a bit of his too. Doolon having certainly the least amount of um, stuff mined from that. So fully heroic, Sea Wing going down at the Terror Drone. Very sad to see. And then this is a fully heroic battleship. It's currently unoccupied. So this is going to get capped by, by Demon. He's sending an engineer for it. And the Rocket Angels are nowhere to be seen. Oh, can they attack air as well? Is that why? I think it's... They attack air and ground, perhaps? Ah, oh, didn't quite get the cash steal in time. Because if they can take out the aircraft carriers, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, they can. Nice. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So they're kind of, they're anti-everything. I get it now. And he stuns them. Jeez, that's 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 very strong. Okay, I get it. I, I get it. I see what's going on here. These are very, very powerful. In Defense Bureau, for the Allied player, has the Chronosphere. Now, I don't know if you can actually Chronosphere these because they're flying units. But it wouldn't even matter anyway. Like, where, where would you put them? Unless he has a lot of anti-air in position. Is a very very powerful cruiser. Yeah, because those those uh, rocket angels they can they can actually take out like even the the cryocopters as well. They use the iron curtain on the dreadnought. He's trying to take out this refinery. Well, and also the chronosphere. He won't get it though unless he uses the satellite. Yep, there we go. That's gonna go down here. Two minutes available. Two minutes left rather on that one. And the vacuum imploder, the super weapon, is ready. I'm trying to take it out with these uh, tank buster call in, but vindicators, are rather, twin blades in position. Demon looking good here, but there is a lot of air units. I don't see much anti air here. I see a lot of twin blades, and that's about it. The odd flat cannon. Which he should actually use his engineer to, to heal. He needs to get some kind of anti air out. Mix would be very good because of their splash damage. Oh, there, there's bullfrogs. Wow, there goes all of them. Large infantry army for Vindies, but they're very vulnerable to the V4s and their, uh, their splash radius, whatever it's called. The shrapnel shell or something. And this is a Soviet Shogun battleship. That EMP ability is just so good. Long range, large area of effect. Down she goes. I think that's the main thing about the aircraft carrier is that it's you could you could say it's the weakest because it has it has aircraft which can get shot down, but the EMP ability is just so good. It's certainly the best um, ability of all the, the battleship abilities. I like how all three players are still in this game and it's looking pretty even still. Natasha with a wrecking face though. This is a lot of twin blades. That's 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 crazy. It's two Apollos, but the twin blades are actually pretty durable. They can just fly away. You lose one, sure, but not a big deal. And meanwhile we have both the Iron Curtain and the Vacuum Imploder. Pretty failed attack by the looks of it from from Duelon, but two battleships here in the water. One of them was sniped by Natasha. There's a terror drone as well, which can actually stun the battleship and prevent it from moving, but it can still attack. Whoa, there's a vacuum imploder. There we go, that'll do it. Nice. Man, that is a cool super weapon.
This is turning out to be a really epic game. I think at this stage, though, I'd say that uh, Demon has it because he's got just so much air units. He has both his super weapons. He has to get a lot of anti-air. I mean, IFVs aren't very good either. That's kind of the thing is... Allied anti you could say, is perhaps the weakest. And Impolos are really, really good, but... They're, they're, you, you can counter them, and certainly the amount of bullfrogs here are doing so. Soviet anti-air, I mean, it's, it's really good in terms of scaling, it's, because a lot of it is splash, not just the bullfrogs, but... Um, you know, the flak troopers, you've got, of course, the, the migs, all of which do splash damage. Now, that seemed like a bit of a waste, really. That's, I mean, he crushed a bunch of infantry. Maybe he can snipe in the Vindicators, but... Yeah, I, I don't really know what that was about. But actually, the Hydrofoil was a really good counter to the Iron Curtain. Because you can, you can disrupt them. Even if you can't destroy them. Yeah, that was a waste. So I think Demon all he needs to really do is just hold hold this expansion. No one can attack him given his his, his anti-air. I think the game is slowing down a little bit now. This harvest is actually fully depleted. Both of these have been depleted. Oh, you, okay, you can still mine though when it's depleted. It's just very low. So it's kind of like Brood War with Vespian gas. But that's bugged out. You know, actually mining on that one. Feels bad, man. The only play with the middle... The middle refinery is... Doolon, but no water expansion for him. And it's slowed down. There's no naval units. Uh, oh, there's an engineer. Just looking for a sneaky cap. Maybe this power plant. I don't know if he, he realizes it's there. The economy is low because a lot of these bases are depleted. And Chrono's been rebuilt. Vacuum imploder counting down. I didn't do much, did it? <laughs> this game is going so long that we're actually beginning to see two trees. Normally you don't see that many. Normally it goes like halfway to one. Bloom Bombs, Final Squadron. Mass production, nice. Still, so many twin blades. The hydrofoils, though, are, are insanely good anti-air in terms of naval, naval anti-air. I think they they have like the highest DPS of any naval of any anti-air unit, like single target DPS. Gonna need more than just one though. It's also a really nice showcase for Natasha because the, the snipe is just so long range. Whereas Eureka is, is, is great, but Eureka has much shorter range, so it's much easier to snipe her down before she gets within range. And, and, and Tanya, especially, not so good against naval units if you have units defending it. Oh, what? <laughs> Point defense drones save the ore collector. Nice. I like how it has the Emperor's Rage, but it's still so fast because it's shrunken. Oh, Dulon calling in the GG. 
Okay, he didn't really have much left. He must have been out of cash as well, that was his last collector, I'm assuming. So now it's just between Dulon and, uh, rather, Demon and Vindy's. Natasha can actually take out this just with a regular attack. But Crycopper going in for the freeze. Yeah, gets frozen pretty fast. Good save, but for how long is the question? There's no more... Oh man, yeah, these bullfrogs... Taking out these planes pretty fast. Vindy's instead going for the counter-attack, the Vacuum Imploder and the Iron Curtain are both available. Chronosphere's available, but that's not going to be a big deal. Nice use of the Black Hole Armor to try and keep those Javelin Troops alive. You can't focus the Javelin Troopers inside of that radius. And that's the Cryo Shot, but you can crush them with a Hammer Tank, unless he crushes the Hammer Tank in response. Nah, too late. Wait, what? The Javelin Trooper survived, gets all the power plants, there's a lot of Twin Blades. But this Assault Destroyer is getting low. And Natasha is... not doing any damage at all. <laughs> Man, that's so funny. If he's desperate, he can... No, he's out of power. Okay, Zeke, he's got power now. There we go. He recaps it with a Javelin Trooper. He needs just one shot, just something to try and get that down. Is there any twin blades left? There we go. I was gonna say he could use the chronosphere to teleport the the javelin troopers into the water, but that that wouldn't be a very good use of them. He'd, he'd, he'd instead want to keep it for aircraft carriers. Uh, um, no, so I'm thinking of the wrong player. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Um, allied player, of course. I mean, what can he do? The problem with the Chronosphere is both Natasha and the Bullfrog are amphibious, so that wouldn't actually kill them if you put them on the water. I mean, I guess he could put them on, like, a cliff? Does that kill them? I'm guessing it does, unless it's, like, greyed out and you can't do it. Whereas if this was all hammer tanks, you could just you could just kill them with the Chronosphere. And the Proton Collider is actually on its way. I feel like for the most part, the Chronosphere is the better of these support powers. Depending on what your opponent's composition is. Iron Curtain, I mean, and that can work if you have, like, a lot of units and you can attack with them. Okay, this is what, the Vacuum Imploder, where's he going? Goes to the Proton Collider, the Airfield Bureau, Seaport. He won't kill the Proton Collider, though, I don't think. Oh, I didn't even get the buildings, either. He needs to... Pull down the satellite. There we go. That'll get it. Nice. This game still showing no sign of wrapping up anytime soon. This is a good naval force. And this is going to come down really to the forward expansions. We've got one refinery here. And one here for, for Demon, so it's even economy, I think. Oh no, no, never mind, because this one's being harvested too. But this is depleted. That has a lot left. These are both being mined, so it looks like control of the middle is owned uh, by Vindy's. This is very vulnerable to Natasha. This one, not so much. They are depleted, but it's still worth destroying. I mean, he could, I guess, just use the Iron Curtain on Natasha, run in, snipe the refinery, snipe the armor facility. That would work. Unless I'm missing something where you can't Iron Curtain infantry. I don't know if that's true.
This has been a fantastic game for Natasha. She has just decrewed so many of these naval ships. And I feel sorry for Tanya hasn't done anything this game. Even even has the Bureau. And Vinny's just hasn't bothered trying to use Natasha. Maybe it'd be worth going for the Centurion Bomber and just dropping off Natasha, blowing up the Battle Lab and the Vacuum Imploder. That can be quite cheeky. Well, maybe we'll see some uh, cheeky use of these powers. Like the... Chrono Swap, that's a really fun ability. Surveillance Sweep, man, there's just so many support powers, I've never seen this many at one time. Oh, doesn't quite get the Natasha with a freeze. Now, Natasha can't snipe this because the Athena can actually take her out. Uh oh! Ooh, dodges it, but didn't get the kill in time. And has the bullfrog there to disengage. Nice. <laughs> oh man. I love this game so much. There's just so much crazy utility that you can do. All your unit synergies is just nuts. This this is a pretty scary army though. Especially with the black hole armor. That was the Desolator airstrike. And this is a decent ground army here. Mirage tank is is uh, going to be very potent. The only army is really just these twin blades. And we actually still have the Chronosphere. So, I mean, you can just maybe just attack the base and then just Chronosphere the units on the other side of the map. I like this, though. I'm trying to go for the, uh, the land expansions, but is it really worth it? Given that they are depleted, it will take a while for them to pay themselves off. And the MCV is just so vulnerable now. But these, yeah, these Mirage tanks are going to be a big problem here for Demon. His army is looking pretty scary. Scarily small, I should say. What about his support powers? His Cash Bounty, Iron Curtain. Oh man, this could be the end. Vacuum Imploder, a minute 20 seconds. He's going to use the Iron Curtain now on his Twin Blades? He's losing his base, the War Factory, the Super Reactor, the Vacuum Imploder's being focused. And he's he's not engaging. He's waiting. He's gonna lose it. Oh, out of power. He can't use his, his support powers now. Oh, man. He has a couple of airships, but they're really slow. And there's two IOVs. We can just kite them around. Still has the Iron Curtain, but no chance of using it. He will take out these uh, these Mirage Tanks, though. Nice try there, but they're being focused by the Apollos. Here come the MiGs to ward them off. Javelin Troopers with the Laser Locker very effective as well. They're actually repairing themselves somehow. Well, he holds on. Oh my god, he did it. Has both of his airships as well. He just needs to put the javelin troops in these IFVs and can just kite them around. But he is he's, he's rebuilt his reactor. Man. This is crazy. And he still has his iron curtain, so. Oh no, there, there goes all of his 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 cure of airships. That's sad. But that being said, he will take out the army of Indies during the process. And maybe it's gonna buy enough time. There's actually there's no units left. Well, that survives. He's within range of this war factory now, but the IFV spawns just in time. He's fully heroic, so he will repair himself pretty quickly. <laughs> and he's still alive. What about a an Apollo a hydrofoil? Migs need to be in position. I think they ran out of ammo. Oh no, there they are. Oh, there goes the Kirov airship. Hero of the people, Apollo. Engineer goes down. I think he was trying to recapture this aircraft carrier. Good work with the harassing riptides, but still two refineries are mining. It's just two? Yeah, this, this refinery is vacant, as is this one now. This one's still mining too. 
This game is on the edge. Twin blades, both fully heroic. MIGs. What's their ammo like? They may need to go back to the base to actually rearm themselves. Man, this game is all over the place. Assault Destroyer in the base. The Iron Curtain was already used. Somewhere. Taking the production is very important. Terror Drone, nice. Okay, he's kind of lost his time though. He needed to try and get in while he was still focusing the refinery. Chronosphere ready to go, 30 seconds. But it's it's mainly the air units which is the threat, and the chronosphere won't help. Oh, look at this aircraft carrier. That's nasty. Oh, multi the turrets can take out the MIGs. Going for the power plants, he wants to take out the uh, the the ability to use the multi gunner turrets. Should he defend his base? Oh, look at that! Okay, what, what was that again? He chronosphered... That was the MCV! I think that was the MCV! <laughs> he chronosphered the MCV into the cliff. Oh my god. It's probably a terror drone. He actually got the terror drone within range. He's got no way of repairing this. Hydrofoil can't reach these twin blades. I think that's going to be the low power mode. If not, this one will be. I guess there's a few actually. And there, there it is, low power mode. Now we can go back in for the uh, the airfield. Oh no, the hydrofoils. Okay, he snipes one of them down, but there's two of them. Man, those fully heroic twin blades, so powerful. The reactor is still alive, and that should s survive too. Yeah, he won't get it. Very important pick up there. He has one refinery and he has one super reactor. That's his entire base. If he loses that, he's out of the game. And there goes his bullfrog. Does he have any MIGs left? He needs some kind of anti-air. Oh my god, I think he's out of anti-air. He doesn't have any... Oh, that's GG! He throws in the tower. He doesn't have any uh, abilities because he lost his MCV. Man, what a close game. That was so funny with the, uh, the the Chronosphere, but it was actually a really good play because that Riptide would have taken so long to destroy the MCV, and the MCV he would, have, would have crushed it at some stage unless he was you know, really paying attention at all times. Uh, so that was a fantastic game. Very, very long. It went for 39 minutes, which is a very long time for Red Alert 3. Economy, uh, Vindy's actually had the most income, which kind of explains his win. I mean, I feel like Vindy's... He went, uh, Demon, when he was defending his base against that push, he waited too long f until he attacked. Am I missing something? Does, does the Iron Curtain not work on air units? Because if it did, that would have been um, a really good defense. Perhaps it doesn't. But either way, GG, well played. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this Red Alert 3 cast. Let me know if you want to see more. I, I do enjoy casting this game. Um, it's a shame that Blake doesn't play it or really know the game. Um, but still, it's a nice thing to solo cast every now and again, so we'll see you next time.